So today's the day that I am going to Vlogger Fair and leaving for Seattle and I know, I'm sorry, it's really dark. There's not much that I can do about that. Um, I'm on my way to work and it's still dark outside because I get to work at 4 o'clock in the morning. So that is that. Well, I'm excited to share everything I'm doing with you guys. Here we go. Well, I made it to Seattle. This is Roshan. And that's the That's the Space Needle, which almost everyone who watches my videos is from Washington, so this is kind of pointless, but yeah. Like I told you, I am here at Vlogger Fair, and it is not a conference, not a YouTube conference. It is a fair, and I tell you what, this is amazing. If they have this event next year, you are gonna have to come, and I'm just walking through, and there's so many amazing things. There's over a thousand people who are registered for this event. Social media is all about real connections, so you have to come out and meet all the people you wanna see. And here, I will show you just a little bit of what's going on. There's booths everywhere. So it really is just pretty much like a fair. So check it out. I'm in a bathroom. If you look at it, hi. Okay, it's really silly, but this is a porta potty. This isn't a real bathroom. Look at it. It's like the nicest porta potty ever. Look at these sinks. Isn't that crazy? Okay, I just had to show you that, that I am in the world's classiest border potty ever. So I'm gonna rip my pants some more, jumping on and off the stage. Uh, so who's got a? <laughs> it's it's enormous. What's <laughs> <That's> enormous? <laughs> Tim, there's children here. The hole in my pants. We need Tim to have some. That's like the worst. <laughs> that's the worst location to have. It's because all of the questions all day. I'm jumping on and off the stage, and one time it just got. We can't stop looking at your groin area now. Yes. We need some pants for Tim Negan. Will somebody get this man some pants? Is there loot crate pants? <laughs> Somewhere. Anyway, who's right. got the first question for Shay? Well, it's, it's part of our life now. You know, I've been reading this book called The Happiness Advantage by an author named Sean Acor, and he says we are nothing but a collection of habits. And that's kind of who you are, is what you do. And I vlog, and I've done it every day for four years. So it's, I think it would be harder not to do it than uh, to do it every day. I feel like I've been able to do and accomplish so many things because of you guys, honestly. And it's like, you know, I just want to be like Josh Groban and say, you raise me up. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it encourages me, it motivates me, because I, I've always wanted to do this kind of thing. If I didn't do YouTube, there was at one point where I was like, if I could do anything, what would it be? And it would. I wanted to speak on a stage and like motivate people because there's nothing better than feeling like what you do makes a difference. So if you're in a job or you're headed down a career that you think is uh, just like good because it makes sense but you don't like it, don't do it because then your life will suck. You need to do what you love regardless of the money. And I know like my mom for the longest time, like the first year and a half, two years I was doing YouTube, 
my mom would text me like twice a week. You need to go back to school and get a real job, Shay. Why don't you be a flight nurse? You like adrenaline, you like helping people. You could be a, a nurse on a helicopter. It was always sending me like links to like jobs or like <laughs> vocational schools. I'm like, mom, I'm doing this. I love this. The money will come. And now she lives in the house that I bought her. So <laughs> do what you love and the money will eventually come. And that's the secret to life is to do what you love because you're only gonna live maybe like 80 to 100 years and then you're gonna die. So I don't know if that's news to anybody. Um, so with YouTube, you have this so section called comments, and sometimes you have not so nice comments in those sections. I think it's been good because um, it's, it always gives you another perspective of something you wouldn't have had to look at. So I feel like no, no matter like what I'm thinking or asking or doing in my life, I always am thinking of what would the YouTube comments on this be if I did this. So it kind of gives you like it opens your your thinking to other views and kind of helps you accept maybe things you haven't accepted before. So it just kind of broadens your life and helps you to accept more different views. It's, it's a big world, people. There's a lot of people with a lot of thoughts and a lot of different lifestyles, and it's good. To, to not be so closed off, to open up your eyes and see what's out there. Just to love people for who they are and what they're about. They're all just doing. Yeah, you gotta find something that you're truly like, that you truly love, that you're passionate about, and something that you can just talk and talk and talk about, but you just do it in front of a camera. You just gotta find that niche of what you like and what you like to talk about. Okay, so in a video you said you shake your hips really good. Oh yeah, sure. Could girl. you demonstrate that? Oh <laughs> Okay, that was documented on you. How long did it take you to get over your fear of vlogging in public? Oh my gosh, okay. Vlogging in public, she asked. Um, you know, it's so weird, like I still get nervous, but like I just get in the zone. Like I just like, I'm just like, all right, I'm just looking at the camera, no one else is there. Like it's total tunnel vision. So as long as you can just zone it all out, and I know that like, regardless, people might think that I'm like stupid or weird, but like I have a lot of people that are watching my videos, so I just think of that, I'm like, well, people are gonna enjoy this, whatever. I mean, because I know there are days that are just so overwhelming, and it's just that one, that one comment that's just, just right, just pokes you oh, right Oh, for in the gut. sure. How do you I mean, deal with that? Because the positive comments override the negative. And that's totally what keeps us going because we get those comments every single day, you know, those negative comments. But what we like to do is focus on the positive. I think a good film, I think across the board, no matter what medium, you're trying to tell a story and you're trying to entertain. And so I think if, whether it's a film or a shorter piece, if it tells a story and entertains the people who are watching, I think that you've had a success. So um, I think that's kind of the, basically it. Yeah. I, I, it doesn't, I, a project doesn't need to have lots of flash. If it tells a story and people are engaged and it's compelling, then that's that's all you need, in my opinion. I Because if you're being positive, you're not always being honest. Like if I want to put a positive spin on everything and make you smile and something goes wrong in my day, before I hit record on the camera, I'm gonna like kind of hype myself up and be like, I'm gonna put a positive spin on this. So I'm putting positive energy out into the world. And, you know, even if something you know really tragic happens, I'm gonna kind of like smile before I turn the camera on. But is that honest? And if you're being honest, you're not necessarily being positive. If you're like, okay, I've had a terrible day, and this is going wrong, and I don't like this about myself, and I don't like this about other people, and it's tough, and I'm struggling. I made um, a video that happened to go viral in 2008. I was actually homeless at the time. I was homeless when I made my most popular video, um, and that video happened to get featured on YouTube's front page back when they used to feature videos. But now we're working on a documentary with Shay Carl, who I, I mean, we're friends, but I'm still a huge fan of the guy. 
like, you know, I, I sit, I, I'm not to you, but like, I sit and I talk to Shay and I'm still in awe. I'm still like, I, 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 I wish I could be half, well, a tenth of what you are. So to be working with someone that you're a fan of is like an incredible honor. And um, all of 2013 we've been working on a movie, which I never thought was going to be possible for some dude that was homeless in Ontario, you know? This is the fat kid's table. <laughs> <laughs> it was like right oh. in the fat table. Oh. Oh my. <laughs> of your favorite flavor. You have like 20 different flavors. So we'll contact you and deliver them to your door. Okay, so this isn't my first vlog, but it's my first vlog. This is, this is Chelsea. We met like five minutes ago at a table. It was cool. She's nice. So it's our first vlog together. Yeah, first vlog together. Alright, so vlog affair just got it over. Right now I'm on the light rail. Back to SeaTac, and I'm like praying to goodness that I make my flight because we kind of got lost on the way down here. Um, my friend Jessica, she gave me a ride to get on the light rail, and so hopefully I don't miss my flight. But I'm on the see the light rail train, um, kind of similar to the, the ones that I've been to on the east coast, but. So that is that. I'm done with vlogger fair. I'm headed back to the airport to head back to Spokane.